All right, this is the uh, second video or an addition. I don't know what's going to happen yet, but as I stated before, this I'm going to start taking these carbs apart, and this will just be the video of uh, that whole process. Um, I was just thinking maybe I've got the manual here with me. Maybe what I'll do is I'll read out you know, what the manual says, and you can watch me fumble around and try to do it. And uh, when it's all done, you know, I'll learn something, and maybe someone else there out there will also learn something. So... Stick around, let's see how this goes. Uh, basically, so far I got the float bowls off, the floats out, um, the top covers off and everything. This spring, you're supposed to disconnect it from the two, um, the spring on here. You're supposed to disconnect it from the two sides, but it was held together by uh, zip ties when I got it, so that part was done for me. So the next step according to this, take off the top covers and uh, remove the throttle link arm set screws. So those guys are in here. Um, let's see if I can point at the same time. These guys here. One, two, uh, three. So I'm just going to remove those and go from there. And I'll maybe put a little blur, but just to edit that, it's the screw above the one I just showed you guys. Like I said, not mechanically inclined. Now, this is a 35 year old bike, something like that. So, I'm not sure. Oh. No, see, I already messed up. This is, this is why I got the bike though, the whole learning experience. Like I said, I have no mechanical experience, so I don't, uh, you know, I have no real clue of what I'm doing. I'm just trying to follow the instructions, teach myself as I go. And I can tell you already, the first thing that I did there. Now everything looks like the pictures, and. And uh, the screws are the first ones that I showed you again. So, the other screws that I was just trying to loosen off are for the, um, the actual carb synchronization screws. And they have a lock nut on them, which is why I couldn't undo them. Now, take your things in order. Now, just, I don't know if this helps anybody else out there, but for me, um, to keep things in order, I got everything on here, and each piece is numbered, you know, where they're supposed to go. So, my plan and my hope is that as I take all this apart, once I am, once I'm all done, everything will go back to where it's supposed to go. <laughs> that being said, though, we all have our theories, don't we?
Now there is a little washer on, um, a little metal washer on all of these. And you want to be careful. Looks like a little, probably can't see that, but it's a little lock washer. Be careful not to drop those into the body and lose them or onto the floor. Whatever else. keep my cards this way because it makes more sense the way I have it lined out. I, I think my camera just reversed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The pictures have it the other way. But we're going to go this way and see how it goes. <coughs> uh, the next step it says here is on, on your Oh, sorry, just, oh, I've got it all, it's going to come off. Um, on these valves here, you can probably see there's a little, two screws holding each one. On the back side of the screws here, there's supposed to be a little lip that, uh, from the factory, it stops the screws from backing out. So, the first thing, I think my camera's reversing everything, so there's no point in me showing that, but it says, file off the staked ends of the choke screws, choke valve screws, sorry. So you're supposed to file the back ends off, um, remove the choke valves and discard the screws. Now, I'm not going to discard the screws because I need them to put it back together, but I was reading online, if you take them off, um, when you put them back on, just use a bit of Loctite so that they don't come off and get sucked into your cards while you're running. These are pretty little screws, so. And they're on a spring loaded piece, which I'm holding shut with one hand. Oh. So I'm trying not to drop it in to the card body. Although I suppose at this point it would be very hard to get it out. But. At some point I'll be getting a better camera here so you guys Hey pretty. Hey cats. Aries. How you doing? Now since I don't 
can't promise my memory. Once I take things out, I like to, uh, anywhere that I might have some confusion, put the screws back in there. Just trying to make some space here. I will warn you all right now, in my videos you'll probably hear a lot of animals. We have uh, four dogs, a cat, we have a lamb, and two horses out here, so don't be surprised if you randomly hear animals making noises in my videos. And uh, I know this counter and stuff. In the background, sometimes it looks like I'm in my kitchen or my living room. I'm not, just to clarify that. I had a little shop shed out in the back of my house here that I'm using right now until I actually get some time to put together the garage properly. So. Just to show you, basically, with the valve covers, you take them off and you're just left with the open port there. And I also apologize for any quality of video here. Um, I'm just putting this together on my, my iPhone, so. If you all like and comment and subscribe and I start getting a following, maybe I'll get a proper camera and make some more legit videos, but for now, there's a good chance none of you are going to be watching this, and I'm just some crazy guy sitting in a shop talking to a camera. My hey, fuck it, it's YouTube, right? What's up, bud? What's up? Aries. Now don't forget, like I just did, this is spring loaded, so as you let go of the, as you take the valve off, it's going to try to snap open and toss your screw somewhere. The most annoying thing so far about this whole project for me has been uh, the amount of stripped screw heads and stripped screws on this bike from you know, 30 plus years of oh, man, 30 plus years of whoever trying to do mechanics.
probably won't be able to see this, but there's always going to be at least one screw that's all stripped out. Should look like that. Anyway, that's one of the joys of. Like I said, I bought myself an older bike that didn't run. It was a pleasure, so. Alright. Remove the rear bracket. Again, the rear brackets are the piece that holds everything together here. I'm just going to remove those. It's a 10 millimeter bolt on this bike. Could be different on other ones. From the looks of these parts here, I'm probably going to spend some time cleaning them up. You can see they look pretty gross there. Maybe clean them up, maybe put some paint on them. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. My organizational system is failing me. So just a little note, this uh, this rear bracket also has a screw here, a little clamp that holds um, the, uh, the choke cable. Next step is remove the front bracket. So, turn it around. Now, I still have the car boots on here. I'm pretty sure I need new ones. Car boots are the little rubber fasteners that join the carb to the body of the engine or to the airbox. But as you can see, Mine are pretty cracked and brittle, uh, so there's a good chance I'll be getting new ones of those, but for now, instead of trying to pry these off and doing more damage until I can get a proper set, I think someone was telling me they're kind of hard to find, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, 
take the whole bracket off there and leave those on for now so that the next set the next step there is the word carefully remove something but for now brackets I will say so far though, <clears throat> for a guy with no experience doing this for the first time, just with manuals and checking things out on the internet, the whole process hasn't been as hard as I myself made it out to be in my head before I uh, before I took on the job of doing this. You know, I wanted I've wanted a bike for a long time, um, but I've always had this idea that. You know, I want to be able to do it myself and work on it myself. I don't want to just go out and buy, you know, go buy a new bike and, you know, be labeled as that, that you know, biker who's got a nice bike but has no idea how what to do on it. So this is kind of my way of um, setting myself up so that once I do have a bike and I start riding and getting going on things, like if I have a breakdown on the side of the road or if I've got a problem, or someone else I know with a similar bike has a problem, I'll be able to uh, repair my own stuff and help others out as well. You know, I won't have to rely on, you know, paying mechanics and taking it to shops and doing all that stuff. I've always been kind of a hands-on guy. I like to be able to do things myself. Um, you know, that way, when it's done right, you got that good feeling that you accomplished something yourself and you can take credit for it. And when it's done wrong, You've got no one to blame. You can't. You can't blame other people for mistakes. If you take something on yourself, it's it's all your responsibility. And uh, I think by doing that, it kind of makes you makes a person want to strive for success. You know. I don't like to put the blame on other people. Am I missing something? All I'm doing here is sticking a screwdriver in between and trying to uh, separate them. Remove the front bracket. have to try to take these boots off. Because the bracket, I think, is just a plate that fits over top. And the car body probably still comes through it, so... My original... Well, if I should have already. My original plan to uh, leave those on and try not to damage them further, because I think they're stuck on there pretty good if I remember correctly. That plan is now going out the window. I'm going to have to take them off. Shouldn't have to undo it all the way like that, but it is pretty tight on there. So you can turn so you can see. There you go.
basically loosening off the four clamps right now that hold the the boots on. If I remember correctly, I tried to take these off once before though, and they were stuck pretty good. I don't, I don't remember the last time these carbs were fully disassembled. So there's a pretty good chance that these have been on there for a while and have become one with the machine. These two end clamps, I don't know if they're different size clamps or what, but they are uh, basically locked on there until the screw comes on the way out. I'm not gonna lie, that was easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, the screw is messed up there. I would like to point out though that I'm doing this project right now, um, it's Father's Day, and all day today I've kind of been given time to do things. Uh, I had breakfast made for me, dinner made for me, and uh, you know for anyone out there, you know that might watch this that has their dad or someone, anyone really who is into a hobby like this and a project like this, it feels really good to be given a little bit of time to work on it. So be nice to them. Give them, give them that little bit of time. Have something to do. Just trying to pry around the seal here a bit to... Uh, get it to come off the bike a little easier. Like I said, these are these are getting old and kind of brittle and I'm trying to replace as little of this bike as possible if I can. So I'm trying not to try not to break anything. But if you're looking for an easy way to get these off, just prying underneath one edge like this seems to be working pretty good. a tip for you. Little tip. I'm just locking these screws back on here so I don't lose them as they're sitting there. And I put those all one, two, three, four in a row. Just so I can see it.